Hello. We are announcing a brand new giveaway for 75,000 subscribers. All you have to do is obviously follow me. We are giving away one lightsaber from Art Sabers. They are sponsoring this giveaway. So what you have to do is go to the pinned comment down below. Follow Art Sabers on Instagram, like their image, and tag two of your friends, and you will be entered into our giveaway. We will be doing this giveaway until we hit 75,000 subscribers here on PPSW. Thank you again for your continuous support. Our story continues on Malik's personal vessel's bridge. Young Vader knelt before him. With Revan out of the picture, Malak would bring new power to the Sith. He would help restore the Sith Empire to its greatest glory. Being that Malak believed his former master was inferior as a Sith, his plan, this new one, in mind would be flawless. Malak told Vader to rise and took his apprentice by his side, telling him that they would take over the entire galaxy. Vader looked up at his master and nodded his head. He felt the belonging he'd been searching for. However, he was kind of ticked off that Malak made him fight a grown man. Maybe it was all about perspective. Maybe it was simply that Anakin wasn't looking at it the right way. Like Malak believed that Vader was good enough to kill a Jedi, but he just wanted proof of it. Being 10 years old, it was a bit much and a bit hard to wrap his mind around, but Malak didn't have time to explain it. He turned to Vader and told him to vacate the bridge for the time being. He'd be summoned when Malak wanted him. Vader nodded his head and walked out of the bridge. The Sith Lord, on the other hand, departed from the Outer Rim territories. It was a trap specifically set for Revan, and he fell for it. Malak had a different idea anyways. He didn't agree with everything that Revan did, and he believed that Revan was weak, too weak to be a Sith. Malik believed that when they invaded planets, they should essentially glass the entire planet so that no one could use it. Revan's obsession with capturing a planet was ridiculous of an idea to Malik. He knew it wasn't feasible for the Sith to keep every planet they captured, so why let the Republic and the Jedi have a chance at utilizing them? The Sith fleet disappeared, and Malik began to realize that he needed more Force users to utilize the Star Forge to the best of his ability. Malik was going to bring carnage to the galaxy, and be the Sith Lord the galaxy needed. His fleet arrived outside of the Mustafar system. The planet bled with the dark side of the Force, though at this point in time, the entire planet was covered in lava. There there wasn't a dry patch of land. He came here because it was the best place to station his fleet before dropping his fleet on a helpless Republic fleet. Malik knew just as well as Revan did that the Republic didn't have the forces capable to keep up with the Sith, not to mention that both Revan and Malik were both a part of the Republic military at one point, so they knew how to stop the Republic at just about any turn. When they arrived outside of Mustafar, Malik brought Vader to the bridge and showed him the entire planet below. Without a warning, Malik ignited the lightsaber and slashed at Vader. The young Sith dropped to the ground, barely missing being decapitated by his master. Vader ignited his own weapon and spun around to his feet. Malik beat his blade down on his young student. Vader fell to the ground. His master pointed the blade down at him and told him to get back up. Vader nodded his head and did so. The minute he did, he was thrown backwards into the window, Malik strike throwing him from his feet. Malik kicked Vader while he was down and demanded that he get back up. Vader got back up slowly as Malik was facing away from him, talking, monologuing if you will. The Sith Lord told his apprentice that he was teaching him how to be the best Sith he could be. There was a lot of potential within Vader, but if he didn't utilize it, then he would be nothing. To be a Sith took anger, it took strength. Vader clenched his fists, squeezing his blade within his hand, and he ran forward, and Malak slid to the slide, slashing down on Vader's blade and sliding the weapon up across Vader's arm, leaving a large cut across the arm. Vader fell to the ground and looked over at the blade which was beneath the boot of his master. Malik lowered his blade to his side, looking at his student with a bit of disappointment. He called out across the bridge to his student and told him to take it from him. Anakin held his arm out as he got back up and reached out his arm, latching onto the blade with the force and pulling it with as much strength as he could, but it didn't budge. Malak clenched his fist, yelling out across the room once more, telling Vader to use his anger. Vader clenched his jaw and pulled as hard as he could, but still, no movement. Malak then came up with a fun idea. Watching his student struggle, he wrapped the force around his student and told Vader that if he didn't get the lightsaber to defend himself, then he would die. Anakin looked at Malak and then realized that he no longer had control over his body's movements. Of course, he could still move his arms, but in terms of everything else, there was nothing he could do. Malak lifted Vader ever so slightly off of the floor and began the dragon floor. At the same time, Malak raised his lightsaber blade and pointed out directly in front of him. Vader began to panic, trying to get a hold of his blade, and then anger seeped into his soul. Malak's blade was getting closer and closer to his face, and the heat could be felt as meters turned into inches. When all looked lost on his new apprentice, Malak's foot peeled up and the blade beneath him was ripped into Vader's hands. He smacked the blade against his masters, and the shock forced Malak to let go of his student with the force. Within an instant, Vader channeled all of his dark energy and flung Malak across the bridge into the window cracking it, but Vader didn't stop. All his soul was dead. He clenched his hands and Malak felt his jaw piece begin to shatter until it broke. 
The deckhands panicked, calling out to Vader that if he didn't stop, he would open up the entire bridge and kill everyone on board. Vader gritted his teeth, letting go of his master as he dropped to the ground without the ability to speak. Vader's attention turned towards the deckhands. Fear sat in their eyes as all of them looked at Vader. Some of them accepted their mistakes, while a couple of them got up and began to run away. Vader reached out with his hands and electricity flashed out of his fingertips, burning the runaways to their bones. They crumbled to their knees and Vader walked forward, rejoicing in the sound of their suffering. Vader's head tilted almost robotically as he crept forward, shooting more electricity out of his hands and burning the men to death. When he felt their life force vanish, he turned to the other deckhands that told him to stop to dispose of their bodies and then dispose of themselves. They shot up out of their seats and then ran to pick up the bodies. The moment Vader turned around, he saw his master. His eyes were left widened and his expression was nothing short of flabbergasted. Malak couldn't say a word, being that his vocabulary was broken. Vader, on the other hand, fell to his knees. He was still ten years old. To use as much power was a shock even to him. Vader looked up and saw his master walking towards him, so he clenched his lightsaber, but he couldn't do anything. His breath was shaky and his vision was blurred, bouncing in and out of seeing multiple versions of his master. Malik patted his apprentice on the shoulders and walked out of the bridge towards his personal quarters. He had a lot of thinking to do. Malik knew that Vader was meant to be powerful, but this was more power than he originally thought he had to deal with. The fact that a ten-year-old boy could throw him across the room and hold him where he wanted him was alarming enough, not to mention that he would only grow in more power. Malik also noted how powerful his force lightning was. When he walked past the crew members, their bodies were burnt to a crisp. There wasn't an identifiable feature. They were just simply non-existent. The Sith Lord sat still while a medical droid replaced his missing jawline. He couldn't help but think about everything that had just transpired in front of him. Malik for a short moment felt fear, as if Vader at this very young age could simply just kill him. But maybe he wouldn't. Surely he wouldn't. If he did, who would take control of the Sith Empire he was building? Well, maybe Vader would. What could Malak do to reduce Vader's strength from growing without Vader feeling like he was worth holding him from growing? He then got a good idea. He would have Vader watch with him as they destroyed their enemies. He would then have the Star Forge craft battle droids that would wield plasma staves, and then Vader could spar with them instead of himself. It would be a good outlet for Vader to get experience without Malak accidentally ticking him off and having his powers be unleashed against him. Skywalker, on the other hand, would remain on the bridge, as if he melted into the floor on the bridge. He stayed isolated, tugging on his own feelings about his master. He could sense Malak's fear. He could also feel the fear of those around him, and he fed off of it. The Force was strong with him, and he wasn't a Sith Lord yet. Surely, he would have no issue with becoming one, though. Vader turned his head to a deckhand walking in front of the bridge. He was putting a maintenance request in to make sure that the bridge didn't break whenever they went to hyperspace. Vader's eyes shot open and the man's body turned cold. He looked at Vader and stopped his movement. Vader closed his eyes again and felt the fear wash over the deckhand. How pale his skin got when he looked into the eyes of the Sith Apprentice. For 24 hours, Master and Apprentice would be separated, though that would be very intentional because Malak was strategizing on how he could handle this student. When he eventually returned to the helm of the bridge, he was surprised to see that the student was still sitting there. He walked up and asked the captain to reroute the fleet to the Star Forge so that they could procure more reinforcements for the fleet and for the army. He nodded his head, and within moments, the fleet was sent into hyperspace. Malak stood in the front of the bridge, looking at the fixed panel that was nearly shattered by his temperamental student. While he was standing there, he felt cold, more cold than he did when he first met the Sith Emperor. When he turned around, he looked into the piercing yellow eyes of his student. Vader didn't move, his eyes just stared into Malik's soul. Vader wasn't doing anything aggressive, just observing. He realized his power and he spent the last several hours focusing on the dark side of the force. This was the first time Malik ever saw Anakin with yellow eyes, and the fear that covered his soul filled Skywalker with more power. He fed off of Malik's terror, and he felt power course throughout his veins. Vader got to his feet and walked up to his master and simply looked at him. Malik didn't say a word until a student asked what they were going to do at the Star Forge. Malik repeated his earlier statement, and then Vader questioned what they were really going there for. Malak knew that Vader knew something, so he said that they would be getting Vader some training droids. Vader's reaction showed Malak that the power dynamic between Master and Apprentice had shifted. Malak was on his heels and he couldn't be overbearing to a menace that could, as shown, very easily dispose of him. When they eventually arrived outside of the Star Forge, Malak used the captured Jedi to fuel the massive machine and produce more vessels and more battle droids for his army. When all was said and done, they departed back towards the Outer Rim so that 
that they could deal with the Jedi and the Republic. Vader was aware of another fear that his master had. Malak feared an encounter with a Jedi who led an assault on his former master. But still, Ashan was out there somewhere, and he really didn't like the idea of facing her. The biggest thing for Malak was capturing her and defeating her so that he could turn her to the dark side or, of course, kill her. Of course, there were motivations for the idea of turning her to the dark side. It would be the best way for him to deal with the menace of an apprentice he had for himself. With the reorganized fleet, Malak's forces arrived at Triton and caught the Republic off guard. Their fleet was nothing in comparison, and Malak made sure that they were well aware of that. He plastered their fleet, and then he did something that Vader hadn't seen Revan do, which was an instructional moment for Vader. His master brought him to the front of the bridge and showed him. Vader looked outside the window and watched as hundreds of wings of fighters departed through the rubble of the Republic fleet towards the surface of the planet. Malak turned to Vader and told him that the weakest part about Revan was his inability to crush any chance of resistance. Destroying the surface of these planets would reduce territory that the Republic could occupy. Vader turned back towards his master and questioned him, asking why they would destroy territory if they couldn't have it either. It defeats the purpose of conquest. Malak spoke down to his student and told him that the dark side is fueled by pain. If it's fueled by pain and people suffer, then they as Sith would surely be empowered. Vader again spoke back, wanting to know why or how at all it would be effective for them. Malak grabbed his apprentice by the jaw and turned his head towards the rubble of the skies. The destroyers were passing through the rubble in space and lowering themselves towards the atmosphere of the planet. While the ship passed through the rubble, bodies and debris bounced off the hull of the ship. Malik shoved Vader's face out of his grip and turned back towards the front of the bridge. When they got to the atmosphere, he spoke up, telling Vader to take in all the suffering. The people below couldn't defend themselves without the Republic, and without defense, they were slaughtered. Vader nodded his head, and because Malik was ticked off, he told a student to go to the training room and begin his session early. They would stop when Malik was tired. Vader nodded his head once more, with anger bellowing under his skin. He didn't care for his master, and he had plans to overthrow him. All the feelings that Anakin had dissipated once he embraced the way of the Sith. Originally, Anakin wanted to have some sense of vulnerability with his teachers. He wanted to be accepted by Revan and Malak, and now he would force people to accept him. He would break people's wills, and that included that of his master. He didn't want Malak to die. He simply wanted Malak to share his pain, the pain that languished in ever since they embraced the dark side of the Force. When Anakin went to the training room, he began fighting with the training droids. After three hours, his master would walk in and find him coated in sweat, and then Malak would force him to go until the droids beat him to the ground, stunning him and leaving him incapacitated. When the spars were over and Vader was knocked out, Malak would leave and allow his student to recover, which due to the intensity of the training droid's plasma stabs could leave Skywalker pass out on the cold floor anywhere for three hours to twelve hours. It was a brutal way of being trained by his master, but Vader embraced it in his own sick way. He saw this as a means to get as good as he could so that he could eradicate his master. Not to mention that Vader had stolen a Sith holocron from Malak's room without Malak noticing it. Anakin then used a holocron to obtain information that his master was withholding from him. Some of the abilities ranged from typical, while others were more intense. One of Vader's more personal favorites was the Force Drain. It wasn't a typical Force Drain. It was one that removed an individual's ability to use a Force at all. The other force drain took life away, and Vader didn't want to do that. He wanted to absorb his master's ability to use the force, and then he would make him work for him as a grunt, with all the other common people who worked on their vessels. It would diminish his master's sense of worth and ability to feel confidence at all. The entire purpose of such ability for Vader was to relish in Malak's suffering. He didn't care what Malak did, because... He couldn't do anything to stop him if he did it. The only issue is Vader could only do it to very weak people. Because everyone had the ability to use a force, or everyone had the force in them, Vader figured out how to take the force away from regular people. However, someone like Malak had a lot more midichlorians than the typical deckhand. It was odd to watch for Vader once he took people's midichlorians. He noticed it, but Malak never did. Vader would note how different the individuals who lost their midichlorians would act. They would be a bit more dull, like their life had been taken away from them without it actually being taken away from them. A body without a soul, if you will. They simply did their tasks like a protocol droid. Their personalities died out, and they became lifeless. For a weak, force-sensitive individual, this was the case. Vader didn't realize that if he did it to someone like Malak or Jedi, for example, they would just retain their personality and their emotions. However, they would just become normal. They would be them, just without the ability to use a force effectively. Regardless, the clockwork of the Sith fleet was insane. They were repetitively bouncing on and off worlds within the span of a week. Every week, a new Republic fleet was demolished and dismantled, and every week, a planet was 
was turned from a prosperous civilization into nothingness. Vader enjoyed it because it did grant him new power. However, he thought it was simply a waste, especially because the only thing Malak didn't waste were the Force sensitives he captured. There were Jedi on every planet or in every fleet. His main objective was to capture them and then he would do it himself. Using the training droids, he would hunt down the Jedi and capture as many as he could without killing all of them. After every assault, he would bring them back to the Star Forge and increase the size of their fleet and his armies. It was a simple task for him, and wholeheartedly he enjoyed killing off his rivals in the Force. After Malak and Vader watched the destruction of Christophsis, Malastare, Naboo, Rodia, Faleen, Saifar, and Calabra, Malak would send Vader to the Star Forge. There would be a real reason for this. He feared Vader. Malak could feel Vader's strength in the Force growing with each and every passing victory. Every genocide was accomplished by growth in Vader's rage, and especially in his strength. The way Malak would phrase it is that Vader was going to protect the Star Forge from the Jedi. That wasn't why he was going there. It was just because he didn't want to be around him. Word had it that Pastila Shan, Revan, and some Republic hero were trying to locate the legendary weapon. Malak made it sound like Vader was in charge of a very defensive operation, and he was stationed at the station with 200 of the powerful training droids. Malak knew that Vader would destroy a couple of them in his training, but that wasn't the point. The point was that if the Jedi came, then he would have extra reinforcements to help him. Vader knew what his master was doing. At this point, he was a proud 11-year-old. Vader allowed Malak to think that he was deceiving him and went along with the program. There was a real reason for this. Once Malak disappeared, Vader did too. Once Malak was gone, Vader used a little bit of his Force essence to create himself a hyper-fast starfighter with a bit of cargo space so that he could investigate former Sith homeworld. Worlds. Vader knew that he would spend his days and time wisely, and he could find more artifacts that belonged to the Sith before him. With his mind set, Vader would disappear from the Star Forge. The first planet he went to was Exegol. It was on an ancient homeworld of the Sith. The biggest reason he went here first was because he had a Sith Wayfinder inside of his room, and the Wayfinder led him here. It was one of the only kind things that Revan ever did for him. It was a gift from Revan. He stole it from the Sith Emperor on Drummond Kaz. When Vader got to Exegol, he found the Magnificent Temple, yet it was barren, aside from the relics of a time before him. Though there was something he found especially interesting, and it was that here on Exegol, there was a religion of Sith loyalists called the Sith Eternal. Vader was extremely excited when he found out about them, but immediately disappointed once he realized that these were useless beings that held no ability to use a force whatsoever. However, he would eventually return. He saw a magnificent throne fit for him, and he would simply take it for himself. Why wouldn't he? Vader departed from Exegol towards the next location, which landed him on the planet of Yavin 4. When he got to the planet, he found himself at a location dedicated to one of the few prominent Sith Lords that came before his master. It was Exar Kun's tomb. And so, he ventured down into the tomb and found himself some texts. Vader would spend an elongated period here, learning everything he could, and then, when he thought he was finished, he found himself a Sith holocron. It was Exar Kun's holocron. There had to be so much information within this holocron, so he took the little crystal of knowledge and departed back to Lehan, where the Star Forge was. When he returned, he could feel something that was off in the Force. He wasn't really sure what it was, so he spent a couple days trying to concentrate on the Force to feel what it was, but after three days in silence, he found the answers. While he had been away, the Jedi had accidentally found themselves in the hands of Malak's flagship. Revan had survived. He was captured by Bastila Shan. The three of them were tortured by Malak. One of the crew members on Malak's flagship freed them. As they tried to escape, they confronted Malak. The Republic hero, known as Anasai, was thrown to the side by Malak and then confronted the two apparent Jedi. But first he informed Revan that he was being controlled by Bastila and the Jedi Council. They were simply just using him. To which, at this point, Bastila confirmed that they had wiped his memories. But her reasoning was much different. Malak tried convincing Revan that the Council was using him as a puppet, whereas Bastila told him that she was only trying to redeem him and save the galaxy from the monster that sat across from them. Revan understood Bastila and he forgave her, which turned Malak into a rage-filled man, trying to kill the three of them. And while Revan hadn't yet returned to his full power, he was able to hold his own against Malak for an extended period of time, until Shan sacrificed herself for the Jedi and helped Revan and Ansai escape. However, she was captured by Malak and brought back to his flagship. Malak would spend the longer part of a couple weeks torturing her until her mind was broken and she swore allegiance to Malak. Shan would be informed by Malak that their main goal was to defeat his current apprentice. When she learned that Vader was just 11 years old, she found it ridiculous that he would be so worried about a child, but she was perfectly fine with offing off Darth Vader. Bastila and Malak would begin a new master and apprenticeship bond, and Vader could feel it. 
A rage seethed through his entire being. He was betrayed more than once, and he didn't believe he could be stopped from killing his former master whenever he arrived. Vader had all the forces he needed. However, he was going to make sure that he personally killed his master. Truthfully, Vader had enough force to create himself a fleet larger than anything Malak could ever amass. However, he wanted the pleasure of wringing Malak's neck with his own lightsaber. It would bring him nothing but pleasure, so instead of mounting up his defenses, he would wait patiently for his master and this new apprentice of his to arrive at the Star Forge of Leon. It wouldn't take long for Vader to feel his master's presence once again, and they arrived at a hyperspace. When the fleet arrived, Vader didn't budge. He waited quietly as the shuttle pulled into the hangar bay and landed. Bastila walked out in front of Malak, and the two of them ignited their lightsabers. The 11-year-old boy opened up his eyes and looked forward. He got to his feet and ignited his own weapon. The two Sith ran at him. Vader leapt between the two of them, spinning his blades around in front of him, blocking two strikes before dispersing Malak with the Force. Bastila growled at him, igniting the second part of her lightsaber, and began a fast-paced assault on the young Sith. Vader was on a backpedal, defending himself every chance he got, which was getting increasingly harder against the older Sith. He was shoved from his feet. Just because Vader didn't have the physical strength didn't mean he didn't have the Force power to keep himself in this. Vader deignited his weapon and reached out with the Force. Vader deignited his weapon and reached out with the Force and dragged the shuttle of the two Sith that they arrived in across the floor into Bastila. He got to his feet and used all of his force to shove the massive ship against the wall with Bastila pinned against the side of it. The vessel exploded and before he could rejoice, his master was above him. His lightsaber placed in front of him where it could land the killing blow on his apprentice. Vader growled when he saw it, reaching his hand up and shooting lightning into Malak and throwing him across the hangar bay and slamming him into the wall. Vader looked to his side, and from the fire emerged the Sith apprentice Bastila Shan. She looked a little upset, which who wouldn't be if they were slammed into a wall with a shuttle on top of them. She ignited her lightsaber and ran forward. Vader turned his attention towards her, his glowing yellow eyes piercing through her soul. He shot lightning at her and she blocked it, before swinging at him. Vader dropped to the floor and she slid across the floor. Vader got back to his feet, igniting his lightsaber to defend himself from her rage. He may have been in the darkness longer than her, however, she had much more experience as a Force user. The two of them got into a heated exchange. Vader was talented, but he was struggling. Bastila could see how much he was struggling. She ripped her blade across, cutting his face while he was still holding his blade out, she cut off his dominant forearm. As he reeled from the pain, she lifted him up from the ground and threw him into the fire behind him. Malak got to his feet and applauded his apprentice. Vader's forearm and lightsaber sat idle on the ground. Malak grinned, reaching out with a force, but not being able to pull the weapon from the ground. His eyebrows tightened and he reached out with more of his strength, trying to pull the weapon from the ground. All of a sudden, the blade tipped down the line of the hangar bay, flying towards the fire of the shuttle. When Malak looked up, he looked into the eyes of his apprentice. A chill ran down his and Bastila's spines. The lightsaber ignited, and he stepped forward, with revenge on his face. Vader was furious, but he was missing his dominant arm against two adult Sith. If he himself was grown up, surely this wouldn't be a challenge for him, but it was now. Malak and Bastila's weapons shot on again, and they stepped towards the former Sith apprentice. Vader focused on the Force, ripping panels off the floor and throwing them at the Sith. Bastila was smacked by one of them, and the sharp edge of the panel lodged itself into her thigh. She fell over in incredible pain. Malak didn't stop, he just kept going. Vader raised his blade up, but Malak wouldn't stop, swinging down relentlessly until he broke through Anakin's defense, impaling Anakin in the upper chest near his shoulder with the blade. Malak spun around, kicking Skywalker across the face, knocking him out and then throwing him from his feet. Malak would activate the droids and have them lock Vader away. As for Bastila, he would send her down to the surface of Lahan. When Anakin was unconscious, everything would change. When he woke up, he would be in a completely different place, surrounded by different people. When his eyes opened, he looked down at a white bed. His forearm was replaced with a metallic limb. He moved it up and down, flexing his fingers, and then he heard a familiar voice. Young Skywalker turned his head over towards a door. A bright light was shining in from the door, and a silhouette walked in. The voice sounded familiar, but the words weren't wording. They were slowly being pieced together, and then the face became visible. It was Revan. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is part two of our story. Again, special thanks to Bender Wells, Tiger Boy, Darth Revan, Pimp Daddy Bane, The Last Jedi, Apollo, Jedi Sloth, Mad Mad Asus, Anakin 003, Lemon Knight, Flynn Bad Seas, The Man with Three First Names, Dark Saint 46, and Lord Deadwing for supporting the channel. Smash the like button. You know what's coming next. Part three is coming next at some point. It's already been written, so um, yeah. Anyways, I don't really have anything else to say. I'll let you live with this. The cliffhangers are real with me, as always. I love you all, spread the love, and always remember, my friends, may the Force be with you.